Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer member, Vite Raman. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey there, rulers. Welcome back to the deck profile with yours truly, Paul Raceman. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a recent deck that I played on the channel. And I piloted it a couple of weeks ago now at this point, and I'm also making this video after the GP that we just had in Minnesota. So we're going to be taking a look at my Beatrice Carlina list. Uh, that is honestly a lot of fun when I played it. Um, and I'll have some insight into what changes I might make and um, some other ideas that I had as a result of the GP um, that will help to sort of uh, make this deck interesting and, and fun all at the same time. So first of all, we're playing Beatrice, mostly because she was the first ruler I packed. And so I wanted to see, you know, what could I do with her? Shout outs again to, um, it's Paul Clute from Odyssey Games for giving me the idea of just using Beatrice as this really good support ruler um, who gives you additional cards when you need it. One of the things that's really difficult for Carlina is not having cards in hand. Speaking of which, here's Carlina. Uh, so the Bitey Lady produces two wills of any attribute. Uh, if you just tap her, you can only play one spell per turn. And then uh, you can God's Art to put a four drop into the field and draw a couple of cards and you can't be canceled. So that's really nice when you have things like Castle of Carlina. This card is amazing because what it does is it essentially tutors any of your five drops or higher. Um, there's a lot of really good ones in the deck like uh, like Geryon, specifically Geryon. <laughs> um, I would say is the number one that I'd be looking into around this. Um, and this card is just really good for tutoring him to hand, although there are some other options as well. Um, which we can talk about, but probably down in the comment section down below. Speaking of the boy, here's the boy. Uh, one of the most important cards in the format right now, being able to just say, uh, I'm on the field and you can't play one cost or less spells uh, is really potent. Being able to pay a green for in hand, removing it from the game, canceling something with one cost or less. Uh, same thing with your black, uh, paying a black and removing the card uh, to just destroy a target resonator with a cost one or less. Um, and then if you <laughs> happen to throw this thing onto the field, it has swiftness, precision, and flying. Um, and he's not a chimera for all you fox lovers out there. Too bad he's not. But anyway, uh, this is probably uh, one of the most important cards in the format, and it's also super satisfying to play under castle, so I wanted to play that. These are two cards that I added into the main after some testing at the locals tournament. Uh, three Virgilius, Rebel Against Satan. I'd definitely bump this up to four. This card is amazing. Uh, it has swiftness. You can basically cheat it out using um, your J ruler as bait to pay for the cost. Um, and then you can just sink all of your will into this thing. And it does not use Carlina's uh, one spell per turn because you're activating activate abilities. So uh, Virgilius, really good card to get around um, get around Carlina in general. I also play Brad for the same reason. If you're playing Brad, you know that we're playing uh, number 13 Anti-Magic because this thing will just come back to your hand once you play Brad and you have one in your grave anyway. Uh, if you pay a green and rest him, uh, you can take something off the chase and put it back in your opponent's hand. So it's a repeatable uh, Brad effect. This card basically neuters Carlina matchups. Uh, so the mirror is like amazing. Uh, they can only play one spell per turn. They just put it on the chase. Uh, Brad is such a huge threat. Um, but this thing is honestly a lot better than I gave it credit for when it was first released. This is one of my um, my own texts that it's in the deck. You typically don't really even need to see this, but there was something satisfying about uh, just tapping Carlina for a free Guardian Dragon of the Kingdom. Uh, it's a flyer that gets bigger for every stone that I get, and then I just put the top stone of my Magic Stone deck into the field rested, which means that I could potentially... Uh, <laughs> make multiple Carlinas. Um, it's kind of nice. In Wander, you're going to be playing Trow over this uh, for sure, but this card is, uh, it was interesting and I, I wanted to try it out because in my head I'm like, I want to have a lot of will to be able to sink into stuff. And this is kind of the idea. I'm playing for Wall of Terror. The idea here was, you know, to discard my hand if it was dead um, and just being able to trigger Beatrice's Null effects. I am also playing Megara Jealous Fury. This thing is kind of fun. It also gets rid of your opponent's Satan token. 
uh, which is super fun. So if you have one of these removed from the game um, and they, you know, do their Satan God's art, whatever, on the end step, you can just uh, flash in your Megara and all of a sudden uh, they don't have a token anymore and they lose the game. Uh, Mermaid of the Despairing Voice, interesting card. Um, I would definitely replace it with the uh, Angel uh, Fallen Angel of Black Tears, but uh, for the sake of the deck as it is right now, um, this is something that I would uh, continue to play, mostly because it gets uh, it gets away with bouncing something back to your opponent's hand, um, which is a good way of dealing with a Virgil. Whereas, you know, Fallen Angel of Black Tears can kill a Virgil, this thing can put it back in your opponent's hand, so they basically made an Astral Ruler for no particular reason. And then, uh, <laughs> I believe you'll see this, uh, this card actually won me a game, because I top-decked it after Jeremy had done his Satan God's art, and I got rid of his uh, token, and I just won the game. So, this card's super fun, um, and definitely a good Locals card, I really do like it. Um, it does have, have some applications within the competitive environment too, I think, but... Um, Really, I just played it for the sake of having fun. And of course, because we're playing Beatrice, I wanted ways to discard uh, my hand uh, in ways that made a lot of sense. <laughs> so for instance, uh, Black Rain is one of those. Um, Carlina can pay for it. Um, you discard any number of cards in your hand, and then your opponent banishes X Resonators. Now, of course, this is not super good if your opponent has a Castle of Carlina on the field, or um, if they have things on the field that can't be banished, but it is there to sort of empty your hand and being able to flip Beatrice. It's pretty, uh, pretty convenient. We're playing cancels, and then we're playing the battle comes to an end. This card is a really good way to just top off the deck, making sure your opponent cannot play uh, really ridiculous things like their own Virgil. Um, or, oh gosh, I mean, so many cards you can call with this thing. Uh, the threat of this card is enough to warp the meta as it stands today. Um, and for that reason, it's just amazing. Um, I love this card. Uh, might shift a couple of these to the side deck. But we'll get to that in just a minute. We're playing four Magic Snow of the Six Ages because, you know, I like getting multiple Carlina stuff. Uh, that's great. Uh, more Will is always nice. Adaract is Memoria because they're basically three color stones at this point. And two Black Silence to just sort of round out the list. Um, you're not playing a ton of blue, even though you're playing Beatrice, but you are definitely playing things like Geryon and Castle of Carlina. So you want to make sure that um, you're by turn two you're able to play something like Castle. Uh, without much of an issue at all. Now, if we were going to look into the side deck, uh, I'm playing Dante. Uh, I was doing this before we knew about Turbo Stan, but you also can make Stan. Uh, Stan is here. Um, Dante is really good because you can tutor your Virgilius. Um, this is the fourth one. I just put it in the side, but I definitely would include it in the main board. Uh, Carlina's Storm. Uh, if you looked at the GP and you watched it, you realize that this actually came in pretty handy in the top tier matches. Um, being able to remove your opponent's Virgilius's effects from the chase, God's Arts from the chase, things like that, and draw cards as a result is super, super nice. Uh, Witch of the Fallen Kingdom is probably just a card, if it's not in the main, it should be in the side. And then this is a, a tech that I added in after the GP, because this card is amazing. Uh, <laughs> um, you just... Uh, one Carlina trigger allows you to uh, banish one of your opponent's resonators, and then you can pay three to just draw two cards, which is really nice. Um, this is something you can do in the deck, and it, it certainly does exist. Um, and it's fun to just have as an option. So anyway, guys, uh, let me know what you think of the Carlina Beatrice list down in the comment section down below. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit that like button so I know that you like content like this. If you have any changes you would make to the deck, or you just like the deck the way it is and I had some questions, the best thing to do is to go down to the comment section down below so I can talk to you about it. Anyway, guys, this has been Paul. Another great deck profile with you all, and I'll catch you next time.